النظم الحبيب uh, just checking where we are and then we'll do the inshallah ta'ala the uh, the, the sharh and then the details inshallah uh, concerning the ulum al-Quran طيب. We are in the chapter of جمع القرآن جمع القرآن الكريم The collection and compiling the whole Quran طيب. قال وأشر الجمع على التحقيق في عصر ذا الخليفة الصديق مسميا بالمصحف الشهير من دون منكر ولا نكير the most famous and known compilation collection of the whole Quran it was in the time of Abi Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu and that was the Mus'haf we mentioned the hadith last time and uh, the condition and the context in which the companion they were um, you know kind of alarmed by the killing of the Qurra and particularly is Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and uh, talking and uh, trying to convince Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu to the point that Abu Bakr qala sharah allahu sadri lidharik Allah expand his chest and his heart to accept to understand uh, how important it is to collect the Quran and they called uh, Zayd, they called Zayd ibn Thabit uh, to have him lead the mission of the Jama' al-Qur'an. The mission of Jama' al-Qur'an. Wada. Fa you have in the notes of Ulum al-Qur'an, you have it right in English, a very nice, uh, you know, uh, summary of that all of you you have it uh, those pages from previous classes that uh, we distribute about the compilation of the quran in book of al-atqan you find masha'allah a whole chapter as we mentioned about uh, jam al-quran and uh, 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 chapter 10 chapter 10 chapter 10 of al-itqanu fi ulum al-qur'an so in al-itqan is all the evidence and the hadith uh, concerning that and in our uh, study and what we're sharing is more like, you know, kind of uh, a general explanation, a straightforward, uh, giving you the sahih and the most, or the analysis of what is an al itqan If you have any question, inshallah, we will have it after uh, finishing the this part of the, uh, uh, of al-jamaw. Tayyip. Do you have any question concerning the collection of the Quran in the time of Abu Bakr? My question to you. 
does the collection of the Quran, does Jam'ul Qur'ani in the time of Abi Bakr mean completing the Quran? Does it mean complete the Quran? Was incomplete and the Jam'a completed? Of course no. Does the Jam'a of the Quran in time of Abi Bakr means like uh, put in order the Quran? Of course not. So the Quran was completed and it is in the state that we know today in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Jama' was done based on the last khatma completion of the Quran that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam done twice in his last Ramadan with Jibreel Alayhi Salam. So what is about this compilation, this collection? This collection was the first book gathered. So when we say the first book, so the whole Quran was written, but distributed in different parts in the hands of the writer of the Wahy. None of the writer of the revelation has a whole Quran. The only one who has compiled Quran after with Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. But the writer of the Wahi, everyone has a part of the Quran. And no one of them, you know, has his notes or his writing of the Quran you know, to be kind of uh, uh, complete. Why? Because the Prophet, as long as the Prophet is alive, the Wahi is still, the Quran didn't, didn't finish. When everyone was certain that the Quran was completed, when the Prophet ﷺ passed away, why? Because the Wahi stopped with the Prophet ﷺ. Now, when the Prophet Sallallahu passed away, knowing that the Qur'an is completed, they been reciting, reviewing, understanding, studying the Qur'an that they have fully complete. The Qur'an was in the life of the companion, their guide, their light, their constitution, their law, their way of life, everything. Okay? Why? Because the Quran was revealed to interact with the life of the people. It was revealed during 23 years. Not like the book of Musa, alayhi salam. Allah revealed to him al-alwah. He took them to his people. So it takes time to study them. Wow. The heaven only comes at once. In the time of the Prophet, he received the revelation. He called the one of the writer of the Wahi. He write the Wahi and he tell him to pull it after the ayah from that particular surah. This is inshaAllah. When the scholars, let's call them scholars, among the Sahaba, they call them the Qurra. And they were very well known, the Qurra. Because uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected his book by also honoring the Qurra. Because some of the Munafiqun, some of the Munafiqun, they used to mock the Qurra. Why? Enmity, envy. If you let such a thing spread in the society, then reduce from the importance of the one who carrying the book of Allah is like hurting the book of Allah. If, look, uh, in today's world, a scientist is very highly regarded and respected because of what he's teaching. 
because believe people they believe and highly regard what he has as knowledge. Allah's words are the most highly regarded and loved and sacred in the heart of the believer. The teacher of those words, he need also to be highly regarded. The same when you think of a scientist, how people, they, you know, have high esteem to him. The same thing. So, I mean, we don't say, I mean, they eat the whole day and they have big bellies and they are lying. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the ayat in Surah At-Tawbah. Uh, exactly, قال, uh, when قال, قل أبي الله ورسوله وآيات ورسوله لا uh, Let's have in Surah At-Tawbah here. Just the ayat to go through it. قال يحضر المنافقون أن ينزل عليهم نعم نعم يحذر المنافقون أن تنزل عليهم سورة تنبئهم بما في قلوبه قل استهزئوا إن الله مخرج ما تحذرون ولئن سألتهم if you ask them ليقولن إنما كنا نخوض ونلعب we just used to play and you know just to talk we didn't mean anything we didn't mean anything قال يقول طائفة منهم ما رأينا مثل قرائنا هؤلاء يعنون النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأصحابه أرغب بطونا وأكذب ألسنة وأجبا عند اللقاء. <تصفيق> They saying about the prophet and the قراء. Those who recite the Quran, those who teach the Quran, those who are all of them are the companions of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. They saying all oh, these people. We see them like, you know, all what they seek in thinking is about their bellies, food. And they, all what they speak are lies. وَأَجْبَنُ عِنْدَ اللِّقَاءِ are the, are the most coward when it comes to fight. This is Munafiqun. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reached him that, and he knew about it, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he asked them, he said, have you been saying such a thing? Qal, Ya Rasulullah, it was the just, you know, vain talk, just talk. I mean, we didn't mean anything. You know, people, when they are gossiping and everything, they say whatever they say. But they say we didn't mean anything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uncovered them. Qala, wala in sa'altahum, wala in sa'altahum, la yaqulunna innama kunna nakhudu wa nal'ab. Qul, أبي الله وآياته ورسوله كنتم تستهزئون is by Allah and his messenger and his ayat of Quran you were mocking and making fun لا تعتذروا قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم there's no excuse you've been indeed being disbeliever after your after your belief واضح I'm just telling you this to see the importance of the Qur'an and the importance of those who carry in the Qur'an in the generation of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when these valuable and great people are being targeted in many of the wars, especially in Ma'arakat al yamama in Yawm al yamama many of them, they get killed. The Qur'an is still, you know, fresh. The Qur'an is still in the heart of the believers. But look the companion, how far they look. If there is, for example, a community that have a thousand, you know, if one of this community is killed, for example, the whole community need to make the right measurement, take the precaution, do the whole thing to avoid 
that none of one of the community heirs will be for him done the same thing. What do you think of a community if the first one is killed, they don't do anything? They only will move when 70% are killed. Say, this is, this is, people are irresponsible. They don't have even, you know, love to each other. So, to understand with this example, that the concern of Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, not like the whole Qur'an died, is like there's only few, then we have to save the Qur'an. No, they're still in the heart of the Ummah is carried. But what if something happened that all of them go? The next generation, what are they going to have? Let's secure more the Qur'an by collecting what we have written already. And that's what Sharaha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sadr uh, the chest and the heart of Abu Bakr for this great endeavor. And they called Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu ta'ala to lead this mission. And the last thing I remember I said, قال, if they had uh, obligated me or burdened me with uh, removing a whole mountain, it will be easier for me than to lead the collection and to the compilation of the Quran. I read the next things that uh, some of the very important points in this subject, that's what I said uh, before in the beginning of the class. Uh, the subject that we go through them, just to give a definition. The subject that is really important for us, you know, it depends, especially in the uh, time we live in, the society we live in, many people, they don't believe in the Quran, many from our, came from our people who do not know such, you know, uh, important information about the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a student of knowledge, we are required to know such a thing. That's why I've been asking you, in this compilation to make the Qur'an complete, no, the Qur'an is already complete, is being already not memorized by the Ummah, is implemented by the Ummah. There's a big difference. Is implemented by the Ummah and explained by the life of the Prophet. So they have the Quran, the words, and the meaning of it, which was the life of the Prophet, who was among them. In the speech of Abu Bakr, and the reason that, uh, uh, you know, was kind of motivate him in a way, or kind, they were the reason to select Zayd ibn Thabit. Why? ذكرها ibn Hajr في في كتابه الفتح. Among the reason, you know, uh, leading Abu Bakr, رضي الله تعالى عنه, to select Zayd ibn Thabit. قال ابن حجر in his book الفتح قال ذكر له أربع صفات he mentioned four characteristics first he was young then he gonna be very active and very kind of you know accurate when when someone is young he's not gonna delay things he's going to do it right away very active. وكونه عاقلا فيكون أوعى and he was a man of of common sense of reason wise. So he's gonna be like thinking as a project, and he's going to be like in a very comprehensive way, not to just doing it, you know, just collect. No, he's going to think about it, to do it in in a way of wisdom. Third, وَكَانَ لَا يُتَّهَمْ لَا يُتَّهَمْ No one accuse him of anything. When you say يُتَّهَمْ, for example, you say, oh, he forget a lot. Oh, he was not, you know, uh, very close to the Prophet. Oh, he was not things like that. كَانَ لَا يُتَّهَمْ The fourth one, وَكَانَ كَا يَكْتُبُ الْوَحِي and he used to be one of the writers of the Wahi in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
Also, the narration shows that Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, he was helping all along the process Zayd in all the details. And this is, you know, seems natural because he's the one who had the idea from the beginning. As has been mentioned in the book, his name is Kitab al-Masahifi ibn Abi Dawood. Ibn Abi Dawood. That Abu Bakr, radiallahu ta'ala an, qala li Umar wa Zaydin, اقعدا على باب المسجد فمن جاءكما بشاهدين على شيء من كتاب الله فاكتبه. That's one amazing thing. Abu Bakr, what he said, he said to Umar and Zayd, sit by the door of the masjid. So they announced it. Anyone who come to you with writing of wahi, you only take it from him if you will bring two witnesses that they witnessed that they saw him writing it in front of the Prophet. There you are. So this is the first one. Already memorized, already complete, already written. Now everyone who has a, has a, a, a part written, bring it. We're going to compile it. Someone said, oh, this is, I have part to written. From where did you get it? Oh, I copied it from my brother. I said, no, this is his not. From where did you get it? I get it from the Prophet. I said, do you have a witness? He said, yes, so-and-so. No, we need two, two here. Do you witness that he, uh, he wrote it in front of the Prophet? Yes, I do. Okay, we'll take that. Wada. This is the first condition, shahidah. Qala waqad fassarahu shaykhu alamuddin abu al-Hassan Ali ibn Muhammad al-Sakhawi fi kitabihi jamal al-Qurra'i wa kamal al-Iqra. This is, is being mentioned in this book. Bi'anna al-murad annahuma yashhadani ala anna thalika al-maktub kutiba bayna yaday rasulillah. The meaning? that they witnessed that this writing was written, this part of the Qur'an written in front by the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then their intention is to only write in the Mas'haf what was written under the supervision of the Prophet. So they don't want to write from someone that he wrote it, for example, he memorized it and he wrote what he's memorizing. No. He wrote it by the supervision, under the supervision of the Prophet. And subhanAllah, to show you how the companion, they were very meticulous with the book of Allah. And they were getting to the highest of the details and the highest of the precaution from anything, which is there's no doubt if one of the companions who memorize it, who act upon it every day, to write it from his memory and bring it, say, no. We don't accept that. قال الليث بن سعد يقول الليث بن سعد And this is, uh, you find it in Book of the Itqan. This is, you find it in the book of Al-Qan. Al-Layth ibn Sa'ad, if you read it, you'll find it. Uh, we have the saying of Ibn Hajar uh, uh, and all the ahadith. Yaqulu Al-Layth ibn Sa'ad. Awwalu man jama'a al-Qur'an Abu Bakr. The first who compiled the Qur'an Abu Bakr. Wa katabahu Zayd. And the one who wrote it is Zayd. وكان الناس يأتون زيدا ابن ثابت فكان لا يكتب آية إلا بشاهدي عدل and he used to only write to accept what the reading being presented to him by two, by two witnesses
So Zayd alayhi salam, Rabbi Allah ta'ala an, who used only, so it's not enough that he's written, no, he needs to be written under the supervision of the Prophet sallallahu and he has two witnesses. There is a story being narrated, which I don't think is in the Litqan, but I will... The Prophet Sallallahu was in the market. A man from the people of the book, he loaned the Prophet money, and the Prophet Sallallahu gave him back his money. And sometimes, you know, to make a fitna is to target the integrity of a person. So he came to him in the sukh, he said, you promised me and you didn't pay me back. The Prophet Sallallahu said, I paid you. He said, no, you didn't pay me. A companion, radiallahu ta'ala, and his name, Khuzaym. He saw this man saying to the Prophet, no, you didn't pay me. He told him, no, the Prophet Sallallahu paid you. And I witness on that. When he said that, that person, people of the book, Yehudi, he knocked down his head and he left. Because the Prophet Sallallahu told him I paid you, but he hold him because there is no witness. Khuzayma came along, he said, I witnessed that he paid you. The Prophet Sallallahu he turned to Khuzayma, said, how can you, how come you witness on something that you didn't observe? Because it happened on the goal. Like he said, I witnessed that the Prophet Sallallahu paid you the other one. He felt like embarrassed. He left. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, how can you witness on such a thing? Look what Khuzayma said. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I believe my parents when they told me, you are our child. <laughs> and I don't believe that you are the messenger of Allah when Allah told us you are. And how can me listen to you saying I paid and they don't witness on you when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala witness on your own speech? <laughs> and it's, it's a beautiful analogy. I said someone, he said, I believe my parents tell you I'm their child. Do not believe what you're saying when Allah is saying you are saying the truth. So the Prophet smiled, qala man shahida lahu khuzayma fahu hasbuh. Whoever who Khuzayma be with his witness is enough for him. From this hadith, Khuzayma present two witnesses. What have this story to be related with what we say? There's one companion brought part of the Quran. He didn't have witness except one. This one was Khuzayma. He said, do you have a witness? He said, I only have this man, Khuzayma. So one of the companions remembered the hadith. He said, man shahida lahu Khuzayma fahu hasma. So that part of the Quran was accepted with one witnesses, with one witness, but this witness was Khuzayma. That was his enough for two witnesses. <laughs> and that's part of the compilation of the of the first uh, gathering and collection of the Quran. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Maqal, in the Nahnu Nasdan, the Dikra, or in the Lahula Hafibun, knowing that part of the Quran is not going to have only one witness, but this one witness is equal witnesses by the witness of the Prophet. So you see, Allahul Alim. He prepared all the condition 
to preserve his book, subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the condition that Abu Bakr himself he put, then Allah made it to be mahfudun. Why? Because he guaranteed the hafiz of this book, subhanahu Yes. The whole Quran as we have it today. That's what he recited, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Twice. The whole Quran that we have it today. So the two khatma, the last two khatma, is what we do every Ramadan. What we have in the Mas'haf. Complete. Complete. Well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi died when the Quran is complete. That's why when uh, Surah uh, Al-Nasr, Ida Jaa Nasrullah wal Fatah, was revealed, that was kind of naive of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, telling him that it's time for you to get back, to travel back to your Lord, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. I said, he finished. So the two khatma, it was the complete Qur'an that we have. Al-Kitabatu, uh, as is mentioned in the book of Al-Itqan that we have, قالت كانت الكتابة على قراطيس وصحف كما جاء في الإتقان عن ابن عمر قال جمع أبو بكر القرآن في قراطيس قراطيس you know those thick paper they used to make it out of the uh, of skin animal skin uh, out of uh, large leaves uh, out of flat bones so that's what the people they used to 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 have things to to write on it and then they make it in this thick uh, kind of paper um, at the time was made in a very primitive way. وجمعت هذه الصحف في مكان واحد بعد أن كانت على عسب ولخاف ولقاع وأكتاف في أمكنة متعددة. So based from this specific, you know, قرطاس um, called قرطاس, this type of uh, of paper. And all of them, as it was on some animal skins, on some uh, flat bones, on some different things, and every, uh, you know, all, you know, in varied, uh, various uh, uh, places, in different hands, now is being through this process of bring them all with the condition that we mentioned, the two witnesses supervised by the Prophet Sallallahu now we have them in one mushaf. So we have one mushaf collected from what was written under the supervision of the Prophet Sallallahu completely. And then we have the recitation that the Prophet Sallallahu taught and the Qurra of the companion recite all the time. So you have the book added a more security to the Qur'an. The compilation, it wasn't the security of the Qur'an, but only adding more security to the Qur'an. Well, type when, you know, someone is saying, where is, uh, you know, he has many valuable things. He said, one I have it in the storage, this, and the other one I have it in storage. He said, you know, I want to have a peace of mind. Collect them all. I want to put them in one place. This action give you peace of mind or make what is being collected to be your property. They were already your property, right? So what give you peace of mind? So this collection of the Qur'an is more peace of mind. It's not as people, they lying and inventing, especially some of the enemy of the Qur'an. They say, oh, the Qur'an was only compiled after the death of the Prophet So you know, there's no such a thing. There's no such a thing. So this collection is to give more peace of mind, to have something that has been already out there, to have it in one place. طيب. 
The next one, and we'll do it inshallah after the break, be in later, which is the qala in uh, uh, verse 107. لقول ناصح بلا تواني حذيفة ابن ذلك اليمن. The second compilation وبعده after Abu Bakr عثمان رضي الله تعالى عنه الرشيد يا رشيد is one of the خلفاء الرشيد ونسخه لحرفه جديد and then he did it again he did it again another نسخ بيج on the original one. لِقَوْلِ نَاصِحٍ Following the advice of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman. And we're going to study that, inshallah, after the break. Because Hudayfa was traveling and he saw, heard people reading the Quran, he was like shocked. Is this Quran or something else? Imagine someone, for example, he does not know the Arabic, he didn't practice the Arabic, and he wants to pray. They teach him Surat al-Fatiha, and Surat al-Fatiha, he recites it uh, in his own, uh, you know, native language or tongue. Then what you hear is not Fatiha. I mean, uh, take any language you don't know, and you know you you write it in the simplified you know letters latin letters and read it and have someone who who's like native of that language he will not understand you right imagine write chinese in english words and uh, say to uh, to a chinese person he will not understand the same for the arabic the same for english Sometimes, you know, kind of uh, uh, someone you say a word that he believed that he read it right, you know. But the person, after trying to, I'll say, Oh, you're saying a day. You say, Yes, yes, that's what I meant. <laughs> you know, after half an hour, say. <laughs> so imagine someone reciting his sacred words, the words of Allah, in, in a slang or a language, believing that is Arabic and it's not. That's what Hudayfa heard, and he came to Uthman Qala Adrik Kitab Allah, ya Amir al Mumin. We'll inshallah uh, study it uh, after that. I'll give you the break and meet you after inshallah. Salatu. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى we'll continue our class of uh, علوم القرآن مع النظم الحبير وشرح ذلك إن شاء الله from الإتقان and also uh, the other book that I'm using لمحات في علوم القرآن واتجاهات التفسير للدكتور محمد ابن لطفي الصباغ. The second compilation of the Quran was in time of Uthman رضي الله تعالى عنه. واضح. Let's study the second one and see what is the difference between this one and the and the first one that was done in the time of Abu Bakr رضي الله تعالى عنه.
طيب هنا in, in the time of Uthman is more like قال وبعد عثمان يا رشيد ونسخه لحرفه جديد so here we have نسخ القرآن نسخ is to copy it to copy it huh? copy the Quran نسخ المصاحف so what we have now we have the Mus'haf that we have in time of Abu Bakr Uthman is going to do the نسخ of the Mus'haf المصحف مأخوذ من أصحف أي جعلت في الصحف المكتوبة بين دفتين جمعت فيه أصحف is to put writing in, in, in papers and to cover it with you know first cover and second cover so I said what is المصحف is the Quran بين دفتي دفتي in the cover of the Quran, the first page, the second page, then you have, or the first cover and the, the, uh, the last cover. وأول من سمى المصحف مصحفا هو أبو بكر. As been, uh, uh, as a suyuti في كتابه الوسائل إلى معرف, معرفة الأوائل. سبب what is the reason that led Uthman رضي الله تعالى عنه to do the نسخ so the first one was for safety, security, peace of mind to gather everything you know in the hand of the companion uh, out to gather it in one place and the one who did this was Zayd ibn Thabit by uh, you know the help in the whole process by Umar and the order of Abi Bakr and the witnesses, and so the whole company, they were engaged in all of this. Qala, the first thing that يبدو أن خلافا وقع بين المسلمين في قراءتهم للقرآن ومرده إلى أمره. So in the time of Uthman, there's these differences in the recitation of the Quran. First reason, اختلاف الحروف واللهجات والروايات. الحروف اختلاف الحروف اللهجات والروايات الأحرف we're going to study it what do mean the seven أحرف قال والذين هم لشهاداتهم قائمون for example it can also be recited لشهادتهم قائمون Shahadatihim plural, shahadatihim singular. And both are right. These are two different ahraf. The lahja, the lahja is like the slang, the way that you say. Which is, for example, وَجَعَلَ الْأَرْضَ فِرَاشَ فِرَاشَ is a lahja. It's people, they speak like that. Al-riwayat, is the riwayat that you know. Riwayat, it might be in the idghamat, you know. May yaf'alu, qira'a say may yaf'alu, jaa, qira'a say jia. So this is the pure Arabic ones. But what about those who do not know the Arabic languages, the different way of speaking, of articulating the words, and they listen to one riwayah, thinks that is the Qur'an. If they listen to someone else, that's not the Qur'an. And then you're going to cause dispute, etc., etc. اختلاف ما بين أيديه من الصحف التي جمعها ناس من الصحابة أشرنا إلى بعضهم. Also, they have different masahaf being collected by different companion. Ibn, Ibn Mas'ud, he has his masahaf. The tartib, the tartib, there's some differences as we're going to study in the uh, order of the suwar. The order of suwar, it's not kind of revealed to be like the Quran. Qat'i, uh, you know, qat'iyun is like to be well definitive. 
It is now after the consensus of the companion. But this difference of opinion is Ali Amran before a Nisa or a Nisa before Ali Amran. You find in Mas'haf ibn Mas'ud the Nisa before Ali Amran, for example. So if you have Ibn Mas'ud, he has a Mas'haf, his own personal one. Ibn Abbas has his personal one. Then kind of people, we say, for example, if Ibn Mas'ud, when he traveled and he went for everyone who learned from Ibn Mas'ud, he going to deny any other Mas'haf saying that's not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Prophet already solved this, with two companions, was Umar radiallahu ta'ala and another one, as we go to study in the Al-Ahraf, when he heard one of the companions reciting Surah Al-Furqan, different from what uh, Umar, he have learned from the Prophet sallallahu when he took him to the Prophet, we're gonna study the Hadith, the Prophet sallallahu told him, read, he said, qala hakadha unzilat, and he said to Umar, read, he told him, hakadha unzilat. And then he explained to the Prophet sallallahu that the Quran, came in different way of uh, languages. The languages is one language, the Arabic, but different slang, different way how to uh, say it. For example, um, there is uh, um, in the Arabic language in some region where they, uh, the kaf, the kaf, they uh, pronounce it sheen, sheen, yabki. It's not like sheen, it's close to the sheen. With Ishmael uh, Fihashin. Um, for example, Yakul uh, Yebshi, Yebshi. So, this is a language, for example, the Iraqi people, they, this is how they speak. You know. uh, there's uh, uh, letters where uh, they change uh, letters for them is the same. For example, Mecca. Some people, they say, they use the meme as bad, so they say, Bekka. Like, for example, uh, al -anbiya, you say meme, but it's noon, so this is close to that. There is, uh, 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 words, uh, they, they call it, you know, uh, Ye and al -jim. They some uh, tribes or parts, the Jim, they say it, Ye. So people, they say, Jarbu, and other people say, Yarbu the same. There's people, they uh, uh, swap letters, like people they say Sha'ban, people they say Shab'an, things like that, but which is not right here, but there's, there's a swapping letters into the same word. And all of them are the Arabic language. All of them are the language of the Arabs. So if you have Masahif which compile and encompass all these differences, then it's going to lead later to the lot of differences between the people and fitan. Especially when someone, when he learned the Quran, say this is from Allah, the other one is not from Allah. And that's, so this is called, وَالْأَمْرُ uh, الثَّانِي مُتَرَتَّبْ عَلَى الْأَمْرُ الْأَوْلِ So the first one, when people that have different slangs, different riwayat, is based on the different masahaf that exist among the companions. Uh, the hadith that I'm going to read it to you, that's when he said here, Hudayf ibn al-Yaman. Hudayf ibn al-Yaman, he's the one who's a nasih the one who advising him. Qadima Hudayf ibn al-Yaman ala Uthman. This hadith, as I'm saying it here, Qala Qadima Hudayf ibn al-Yaman ala Uthman. وكان يغازي أهل الشام في فتح أرمينية وأذربيجان من أهل العراق. so حذيفة بن اليمن he was in الشام and he was part of participating in the battles in Armenia and أذ أذربيجان. فأفزع حذيفة فأفزع حذيفة اختلافهم في القرآن. Hudayfa was very alarmed in hearing them to see the differences they have in the Qur'an. قال في القراءة في القراءة in the recitation as well. فقال لعثمان أدرك الأمة قبل أن يختلفوا اختلاف اليهود والنصارى. Said Hassan 
to save the Ummah before they get into, into differences, into dispute, in conflicts, as it happened among the Yahud and the Nasara. So being alarmed, Uthman uh, Hudayfa, make Uthman radiallahu ta'ala to be very alarmed. Now imagine, for example, the few riwayat that we have today, the 10 qira'at, because there were a lot more than that. Imagine if someone will read at the salat with qira'at warsh, everybody else will stop, you know, praying. You say, this, this person, he's like he's reading different Qur'an. Which is actually happened. We were back in uh, in Masjid. We had someone who was a guest speaker. He came, subhanAllah, for, uh, you know, uh, kind of a relief purpose. So he was uh, collecting funds, making fundraising after the Jumu'ah. This person, uh, subhanAllah, he wasn't a scholar. He was just a speaker. But... He read in the Salah, he chose to read, I don't know why. He chose to read Qira'at Hamza. He said, Ihdina al-zirata al-mustaqeem, al-zirata al-ladheena an'amta alayhum ghayri al-maghdubi alayhum wa al-dhali. Alayhum wa al-dhali. Half of the masjid, after the Jumu'ah, they repeat their prayer. So then everybody was like kind of, you know, uh, reproaching the brother, told them, you know, you don't know this congregation. You read usually with what everyone knows. So people believe in Salah al-Fatiha is wajibah for Salah. So if the person that he's leading you, he had this, uh, the Fatiha is wrong, Therefore, they repeated their prayer. They make their own shihad. When he said, Assalamu alaikum, his people calling people and everybody is praying in the of the masjid. So this is, imagine, this has been already established, defined, and everyone knows that. But yet the common people, they do not know it. So imagine in a society where if someone knows only hafs, every other way is wrong. And every other way is not from Allah. And every other way is going to dispute it. And you engage even into a big, let's say, fight, if you can say. Why? Because you say people, these people are changing the, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how they were alarmed because not only they have this riwayat, but they have different masahaf. As I said, different masahaf, as we mentioned. There's a lot of things, if you see, read the, the book, uh, there's a book who has a qira'ah to shadda. You see many things, subhanAllah, which is as used, al qira'ah to shadda, uh, we're going to study it, what is the ruling of qira'ah shadda? Because al qira'ah al mutawatira is Qur'an. Al qira'ah shadda is assimilated as a hadith sahih. If it has the narration is, so it's going to be cl uh, classified part of the hadith. There is, for example, in the uh, uh, Ibn Abbas, in his Mas'haf, uh, in Surah Al-Kahf, قَالَ وَكَانَ مِنْ وَرَائِهُمْ مَلِكٌ يَأْخُذُ كُلَّ سَفِينَةٍ صَالِحَةٍ غَصْبًا There's the attribute, the specification of the boat, which is saliha, sound and good. In Surah Al-Kahf, we don't have it today. Both of them are Qur'an, and both of them are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the form of the Qira'a, the Shadda said, وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبَهِ In Surah Al-Taghab. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala, he narrated, it was narrated, he used to recite, وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ يَهْدَأُ قَلْبَهِ Yahdi guide, يَهْدَأُ his heart, find rest and tranquility. Whoever will believe in Allah. But Qira'a shared that. So, Qala fa'arsala ila Hafsa. So, Uthman was alarmed, radiallahu ta'ala, what he did, he sent to Hafsa. Why Hafsa? 
because Hafsa is the one who has the copy of the Mus'haf that was collected, written by Zayd, under the supervision of Umar and Abu Bakr and the companion. Abu Bakr kept it with him. He's the Khalifa. He gave it to Umar as he's the Khalifa of Khalifa Rasulullah. When Umar was, you know, at his, you know, uh, dying, he gave it to who? He gave it to the mother of the believer, his daughter Hafsa. That's the Amana keep it here to you. So she's the mother of the believer, Hafsa bint Umar ibn al-Khattabi radiallahu ta'ala. The whole Sahaba they know where the Mus'haf in the hand of who? In the hand of the mother of the believer, Umm al-Mu'mineen Hafsa. So Uthman radiallahu ta'ala and he asked, he sent to Hafsa to borrow the Mus'haf. Listen. He sent the Hafsa. قال فأرسل إلى حفصة أن أرسل إلينا الصحف ننسخها في المصاحف send us the صحف we want to copy it in different مصاحف so he made five مصاحف or seven depends on the narration to send them to every center Islamic center in the world look Uthman subhanallah his deed is one of the greatest deed in Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favor Uthman to be the man who will protect the book of Allah. What a great, you know, gift and honor. And look, subhanAllah, how he died under the fitna. Qala, thumma narudduha ilayk. We're going to copy it and then we send it, give it back to you. Qala, thumma narudduha, fa'arsalat biha hafsatu ila Uthman. So she sent it to Uthman. فأمر زيد بن ثابت. He called who? The lead team of the first collection. He's the one. So when he had the صحف, he's the one who did it. فأرسل إلى زيد بن ثابت. وعبد الله بن الزبير. وسعيد بن العاص. وعبد الرحمن بن الحارث بن هشام. Four. The first one, زيد. Ibn Thabit al-Ansari, okay, to Wufia in uh, 45 Hijri. The second one, Abdullah ibn Zubayr al-Asadi al-Qurashi. We're going to explain why Uthman selected this committee. Wulida wahid fil Hijra wa to Wufia sanat. Thalatha was Sabin, I mean, uh, born one Hijri and died 73 Hijri. The third one, Sa'id ibn al As al Umawi al Qurashi, born three Hijri, died 59. The fourth, Abdul Rahman ibn al Harith ibn Hisham al Makhzumi al Qurashi, born first Hijri, died. 43. These young ones born into Islam, not young at the time of, of Uthman, they already, you know, uh, you know, kind of, uh, let's say, two years plus 20 years, uh, 22 years, they're still young. I mean, in time of Uthman. Tayyip. Look, subhanAllah, the committee of Uthman. Qala. Uh, now, if you see the committee of Uthman, uh, ta'ala an, he will, I'm going to tell you here, just read to see the, the wisdom in this committee that Uthman ta'ala an, collected. قال, فأمر زيد بن ثابت وعبد الله بن الزبير وسعيد بن العاص وعبد الرحمن بن الحارث بن هشام فنسخوها في المصاحف they copied it all in the books in, in different مصاحف وقال عثمان للرهت القرشين القرشيين الثلاث look what Uthman he said to see the wisdom of Uthman the three of them زيد بن ثابت is from where Ansar the three others are from Quraysh. 
look what Uthman said. إِذَا اخْتَلَفْتُمْ أَنْتُمْ وَزَيْدُ بْنُ ثَابِتْ فِي شَيْءٍ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ If you have anything, difference of opinion in what you're going to write, in what you're going to write, in language, plural, singular, start with ya or a or ya, which is the same, which one you're going to choose? Choose the one, the language of the Quraysh that was the language of the Prophet. Wada. Qal, إذا اختلفتم أنتم وزيد بن ثابت في شيء من القرآن فاكتبوه بلسان قريش write it with the mother tongue of قريش the purest of the mother tongue among all the Arab فإنه إنما نزل بلسانهم the Quran was sent down by their own tongue which is the tongue of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم ففعلوا they did حتى إذا نسخوا الصحف في المصاحف ردها عثمان إلى حفصة when they made the copies of the مصاحف عثمان he sent back the one that one to to حفصة وأرسل إلى كل أفق بمصحف مما نسخوا وأمر بما سواه من القرآن المكتوب في كل صحيفة أو مصحف أن يحرق. And he sent to every center, to every big city, Islamic city, one مصحف. And مصحف with one of Imam of قراء to teach it. And he ordered to burn everything else. واضح. وجاء في الإتقان نقلا عن ابن أشته أن أنس بن مالك قال اختلفوا في القرآن على عهد عثمان حتى اقتتل الغلمان والمعلمون أنس بن مالك reporting as is mentioned in the book of الإتقان people they get you know differences into the Quran to the point uh, in the time of Uthman uh, the, the, the boys I mean the, the, the student and the teacher they get to fight أي لم يقتصر الأمر على الجند كما في حديث البخاري. It's not only what Hudayfa said, you know, about the soldiers that they have differences in the Quran when he was in his, uh, you know, uh, travel in Asham. This is also student and teacher have problems. وذكر ابن كثير. I'm reading what Ibn Kathir, uh, رحمه الله said. قال اجتمع خلق من أهل الشام مما يقرأ على قراءة المقداد بن الأسود. A group from the people of الشام they learn or they reciting the recitation of المقداد بن الأسود. والمقداد بن الأسود he is from the Sahaba of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And وأبي الدرداء وجماعة من أهل العراق ممن يقرأ على قراءة عبد الله بن مسعود. So group they reciting the recitation of Al-Maqdad wa Abid Darda and another group from Ahl al-Iraq they reciting the recitation or they learn it from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud wa Ubay wa Ubay wa ja'ala man la ya'lamu bi sawagan al-qira'ati ala sab'ati ahruf yufadzil qira'atahi ala qira'atah ala qira'ati ghayr and everyone who does not know the different recitation start to favor his own Qira'an on the other ones. وَرُبَّمَا خَطَأَ الْآخَرُ أَوْ كَفَّرَهُ فَأَدَّ ذَلِكَ إِلَى اخْتِلَافٍ شَدِيدٍ One, he might be mistaken or make a mistake till it led to big differences between them. And big difference becomes big fitna because it led to someone saying to the other one, you are kafir if you do this. So they become, you know, uh, thrown or like um, accusing each other by kufr This is what Ibn Kathir reported and then people they start to kind of swearing at each other. وأخرج البغوي عن مصعب ابن سعد قال لما كثر اختلاف الناس في القرآن قالوا قراءة ابن مسعود when people they start to have differences in the Qur'an one of them said we only read by Qira'at ibn Mas'ud. The other one said, وَقِرَاءَةُ بَيْءٍ وَقِرَاءَةُ سَالِمٍ مَوْلَى أَبِي حُذَيْفَةٍ 
قال فجمع عثمان أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال إني رأيت أن أكتب مصاحف على حرف حرف زيد بن ثابت ثم أبعث بها إلى الأمصار قالوا نعم نعم ما رأيت So he gathered the whole company and he said I'm seeing that we have to copy مصاحف based on the one that done, done by Zayd ibn Thabit in time of Abi Bakr and then send it to the different places in the Muslim world and you know they told him this is the best action you will be doing Ya Amir al Mu'mini. قال فأي الناس أعرب look this is قال فأي الناس أعرب who the one who the best in the Arabic very fasih قالوا سعيد بن العاص قال فأي الناس أكتب who the best you know in the writing because the writing for example when you take zakat with wow and the salawat with wow it has a meaning behind it zakat with wow it means the root word is zakawa not zaka قالوا أيهم أكتب the one who knows all the roots of the word so he can يرسم هم يرايد them قالوا زيد بن ثابت كاتب الوحي قال فاليوم لسعيد وليكتب زيد let سعيد هو the one who recite reads and زيد writes طيب look I will read some you know of the سبحان الله the amazing action that done by Uthman رضي الله تعالى and this is very important فقال كان عمل عثمان رضي الله عنه جمع للناس على مصحف واحد so the action of Uthman is to gather everyone on one مصحف ودرءا لفتنة ومفسدة أما الصحف التي اعتمدتها اللجنة الربواعية فقد أعادها عثمان إلى حفصة بعد الانتهاء من النسخ وبقيت عندها حتى وفاتها. The original copy was sent down to Hafsa and she kept it till she passed away. حاول مروان بن الحكم he wanted to get it from Hafsa she refused. Why he wanted to burn it also. And he said after she passed away he took it and he burned it. وقال إنما فعلت هذا لأن ما فيها قد كتب وحفظ بالمصحف. He said I only did that because what in it is being copied and being preserved in the hearts and it is everywhere in the مصحف. So to avoid any fitna. فخشيت إن طال بالناس زمان أن يرتاب في شأن هذه الصحف مرتاب. So I was concerned if the time goes by then people by the existence of the original one they will have, you know, create doubts on the copies we have. ذكر السيوتي السيوتي رحمه الله قال عندما اجتمعوا للكتابة كان عملهم أنهم إذا اختلفوا وتدارعوا في أي آية قالوا هذه أقرأها رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فلانة فيرسل إليه وهو على رأس ثلاثة من المدينة. Now listen, when they have difference in one of the recitation, they say this particular ayah was taught by the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to so and so. So they send to him and they bring with him three. فيقال له كيف أقرأك رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم آية كذا وكذا. How the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم taught you this ayah. So he read it. So here, as you're seeing, this compilation including the sound. You see, including the sound. Because when he read it, they're going to put like kind of signs to say how to pronounce it. You know. So he they write it exactly how he should recite it. ويبدو أنه قد اتبع في هذا الجمع ما اتبع في الجمع الأول أيام أبي بكر من البحث عن الآيات مكتوبة في عصر النبي وأن يشهد اثنان بكتاباتهما في عصره. Actually here they saying as 
الشيخ محمد أبو زهرة mentioned in his book المعجزة الكبرى القرآن المعجزة الكبرى the greatest of the miracle القرآن in the second compilation the committee of this four led by زيد بن ثابت they did the same thing they did in the time of Abu Bakr so they also they compiled everyone that he has with the witnesses so it's like double action to eradicate later on any doubt voila and this committee they put all their effort in uh, not the accuracy of the words it's already done but in the more details in the way how you recite it and in the way how to try to gather different recitation in one in one area or in in one writing i'll give you the example for example the Mus'haf was written without dots. Why? So it can contain more than a riwaya in it. And this is one of the effort that this committee in time of Uthman, they did it. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, There's another way If you write it down without dots, it's the same. So you include two riwayah in one in one way of writing. That's why anything that it does not go with the mushaf of Uthman, call it shadda. Because if you say safina tan saliha, saliha is not in the mushaf of Uthman, so this is a regular one. قال وانظر إلى العظام كيف ننشرها ثم نكسوها لحم ها ننشر إن عاصم قال ننشزها ننشزها وننشرها وريت الدعوة ليش ذا سيء without that so this is one of the action that they have done to include the maximum free wayat in one مصحف that being already, you know, proven by, uh, you know, the witnesses that that's been recited by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قال ابن حجر وكان ذلك في حدود سنة خمسة وعشرين هجري. So this second one, it was done when? In the year 25. So the first compilation done in the year one, I mean, in the year when the Prophet ﷺ passed away, is 13 Hijri. So that's when it happened, after the death of the Prophet ﷺ, a year after the death or the, in that time, in the time of Al-Yamam. This second one happened in the year 25 Hijri, which is mean after the death of the Prophet ﷺ, 12 years or less. The first compiled Bible, you know when this was written? Some they say 400 years and the shortest one 250. Someone was telling me, he said, it was only 200 years after Jesus. How can Muslim say that he's it being you know changed? I said, well, in one table, if you change the news, it's gonna change <laughs> in one table in the same time. So let's say two hundred years, if it's not four hundred years. Let's have a conclusion for that point by point. The committee that we, uh, and we finish this, inshallah, to do some tuhfa. Uh, we'll do it fast, inshallah. The committee was, was chosen in a very wise 
way by Uthman radiallahu ta'ala from Ansar and Muhajirin, especially the Muhajirin who have the language of Quraysh. وَكَانَ نَصِيبُ قُرَيْشِ فِيهَا كَبِيرًا Three out of four from Quraysh. Why? Because the language that the Quran uh, with which was revealed is the language of Quraysh. And just also to remind you that one of these four is Zaid who did the first compilation. Second, all the Masahif, anything that it has a comment or observation that someone add in his Masahif, everything was removed. There's only Quran. Third, the reference after they did, I said they collected again, and they have the Mas'haf of Abu Bakr done by Zaid of the Thabit. Collect again everything, so it's like making a recheck. Okay, this is exactly the same as the next. Okay, we have different qira'a here. How can we do it? That's where they make the effort. Exactly the same, etc. كتب القرآن بشكل يجمع القراءات التي نزل بها القرآن. The Quran was written in a way to include the maximum possible of قراءات. And what helped that is to not put dots on the words. عدم التشكيل والتنقيط. التشكيل is to put the فتحة and the ضمة the كسرة. Because قال وإن كان مثقال ذرة من خردل. في رواية وإن كان مثقال ذرة من خردل. الأخرى الله in سورة إبراهيم. In other way starts كمبتدأ الله so when you don't write the tashakal, also you are including more qira'at. So this, subhanAllah, action, like, stop the whole fitna about the khilaf of the Qur'an. I'll only ask you one question before I finish. Why burning the rest of the masahaf? 